In this class we're going to talk about training and developing methods. Essentially what we're going to do is to look at the advantages and disadvantages of training methods as used in organizations. So we're simply looking at the advantages and disadvantages of training methods. Now, training is an important part in the growth and development of organizations. Probably the, the most valuable resource a business has got is its workforce. And it's important that the workforce have the appropriate skills and competencies and abilities to perform the functions efficiently. That's what drives down unit cost. That's what enables the business to be competitive. So it's important that the workers have appropriate skills. In the context of a dynamic and competitive society, this is a pressing need. Society is not stagnant. It's constantly evolving. We have uh, all sorts of forces in, in operation in society. Customer needs are changing. Customer requirements are constantly changing. We have globalization and competitive pressure from overseas. We have the onset of a very rapidly changing technology. And all of these come together to make it imperative that organizations review the skill sets of its employees and update those skill sets. Update them to ensure that they are uh, the most efficient they can be to enable the organization to survive, compete effectively and ensure continuity into the future, ensure that the organization is there in the future. Organizations can prosper if they invest in training initiatives. So it's in the business's own interest to ensure that the employees are adequately trained. Training is every bit as much a part of the business as is marketing or accounts or production. Training is important. It's what enables the business to have a competitive advantage. It enables the business to survive. So it's important that the business sees training as an important function. Now the types of training method, well there are various types of training method that organizations can can adopt. They can be broken down into two categories. The training methods can be seen in two, two parts. First of all, on-the-job training, training um, which takes place in the work environment. So on-the-job training. And secondly, you've probably guessed, off-the-job training. Training uh, which involves uh, employees attending training centers elsewhere, away from the workplace, or it could be local colleges or dedicated training centers. So there's training and learning uh, conducted elsewhere. Now we're going to look at these in more detail uh, in the, the coming slides. We'll start with on-the-job training methods. Now these training methods involve different types. For example, on-the-job instructions, and there will be slides later on going into this in a little bit more detail. But for the moment, on-the-job instructions simply means that the workers are given instructions how to effectively perform the tasks at the moment. They are given a task, they are given instructions how to complete the task. It's as straightforward as that. It could be there's an element of shadowing where an employee who can perform the task keeps an eye on a new employee perhaps to ensure that the, the new employee is doing it correctly. So there's one employee just watching the other to make sure everything's going okay, everything's fine. And we call that shadowing. Job rotation is important. 
job rotation means that the workers are moved around. They, they pick up the skills to do a particular task and then they're moved to a, yet a different task again. And the reason being is that they now are uh, more flexible. And should something happen within the, the business, an employee leaves or someone's away ill, employees are able to fit in and perform the tasks that were uh, left vacant. So job rotation is, is also important. It could be that particular projects have particular requirements, training requirements and particular skill requirements. So particular projects are have particular needs and it may be that the the training has to be focused in on a particular project. Of course experience is important. Within the workplace workers learn by doing. They pick up the skills of doing the job. They learn by um, performing the job on a day-to-day -day basis. They know what the upsides and the downsides, what, what could go wrong, what can go right. and um, So that's important. And it's on-the-job training. There's also coaching and mentoring. And coaching and mentoring is is when an employee, uh, very similar to shadowing, keeps an eye on another employee and who perhaps um, mentors the person, teaches the person the skills and uh, explains to the person how the job is done and what's required. They are mentoring the person. We'll talk more about these in the coming slides. And in fact, let's start with the, the first one, on the job instructions. So, training occurs on the job where employees have the opportunity to acquire skills and experience directly related to their job role. This means that uh, when an employee starts work, they're given a particular task and they are instructed how to complete the task. The instructions should be clear. The, the person should be allowed to ask questions and clearly understand every aspect of, of that particular task. And this will enable the person to perform the task and also to build up an expertise in doing so over time. The main purpose of this training is to follow instructions. The person is told how to do the job so they follow the instructions. And therefore it's important that the individuals can listen and take notes when given the instructions. It's important that the employee has the capacity to learn, to listen, to ask questions, to understand, and then follow the instructions. Any, uh, anyone from a trainer, supervisor, to a co-worker can be an instructor providing they have the relevant capabilities to train an employee. So uh, the instructor can be anyone who's got the skill to do so. It doesn't have to be the manager. It could be uh, a fellow employee who's delegated the task of teaching the new worker how to perform the task. Now following instructions, well, there are numerous methods that allow um, this process to be successfully um, achieved. It's important that the trainee is familiar with their job role. This includes its purpose, goals and achievable outcomes. So the, the worker will work more effectively if they understand what they're doing. If they understand the purpose, uh, they understand what they're trying to achieve, what's the goal, what are they trying to do, and they're also confident that there is an achievable outcome. Workers will become frustrated if there's a high failure rate in performing the task. It must be a task that is achievable. And the trainee must also understand 
why they're participating in training. If if a new task is developed within the organization, a new product perhaps with new uh, routine, work routines, new tasks, new requirements, and if some of the existing employees are retrained to perform the new tasks, they must understand why they're being retrained, why it's important. It's important that they are motivated to learn. It's important that they, they don't settle in their ways and get comfortable performing the same task day in, day out, and never want to change. So it's important that they know why they've been trained, and they should be doing it because it, it promotes their career, and it also gives them greater job security. They have a, a wider range of skills. The instructor trainer acts as a model. The, the instructor should be totally familiar with the task and should be able to answer any questions arising out of the performance of the task. So that those being trained have confidence in the instructor and they want to be like the instructor. Employees imitate trainers until the employee is confident enough to work on his or own initiative. So the employees imitate the trainer. If the trainer does it in a particular way, the employees try to do it the same way. They know it works. So they don't vary it. They don't experiment. They want it to work, so they're going to try to follow the trainer in the way he or she did it. Now let's look at shadowing. Now this is really um, an assistant role. The member of staff who is to be uh, who is to take on the role of shadowing, they are an assistant. They're they're an assistant to the person performing the task, and they are also an assistant to management. They are uh, helping the worker acquire the skills because they themselves have the skills and they are shadowing the person who is learning. Trainees will observe the activities, the roles and responsibilities of their seniors before taking full authority for the job in question. So it could be that the person who has been trained watches the person who, who knows how to do it, watches what they do, watches the various routines, watches every aspect of the work and they watch it over and over until they have learned. They, they understand the sequence. They understand the processes and the sequences and then they can start doing the job themselves. The employees are fully involved in the job and they may be required to act as assistants and carry out routine tasks. So. The person who's learning, they see the person who's skilled doing it and they know that soon they'll be doing it. In the meantime, they can act as an assistant. They can help that person. Uh, they can help the person get the material ready to be processed or they can prepare a piece of machinery or they can they, they act as an assistant. But really what they're doing is watching the person and learning from the way the person does the job. They're shadowing the person. Shadowing also allows trainees to judge whether they like to do the job. When, when they've watched it several times they might think it's not a job they want to do. They don't like the job, in which case they have made a decision. and It's, it's better that to do it at that stage then carry through the full cost of training. So it may be that they go to the manager and say that they don't want to do this job and could they have a different one or, or perhaps they want to leave the organization. So shadowing teaches them what they will be doing in the future. They watch a skilled person doing it and they know that's what they'll be doing and they then decide whether they want to take on the job or not. 
Now, job rotation. Job rotation allows trainees to experience different roles and positions within an organization. So the, the trainees can do different jobs. They, they take on different roles and different tasks within the organization and they get experience from doing the various tasks. So it's effective because the trainees have an opportunity to develop trainee skills, knowledge and capabilities. They, they are adding to their skill set. Each task requires them to perhaps have different skills and they're able to modify their skills and apply themselves to different tasks. So they are developing as people. They have greater job security because they have more skills. They have more knowledge and they are more capable. They also have better understanding of the business organization and how the organization works and what are its various operations and how it fits together because they've experienced from different perspectives doing different tasks. It obviously reduces boredom and generates more ideas and more innovation. When people have new experiences at work they are less bored but also because they have new experiences they may come up with fresh ideas about how to do the tasks, how to organize the tasks and they're worth listening to. It's worth management listening to the people who have moved because maybe they have a different perspective and it may be worth adopting that different perspective. They have exposure to different job roles and as a consequence they are more rounded employees. They're, they're better employees. They're able to take on various tasks. They're more flexible. Now project related training. Well trainees may sometimes take part in special projects related to organizational aims and objectives. So there may be special projects or uh, different projects that the organization takes on and the trainees may be asked, workers may be asked to become trainees on that particular project. Perhaps it's an important project, perhaps it's a, it's a one-off job, but it's a big job. It's a big order that the company's received and they need the workers to apply themselves and modify their skills slightly to meet the requirements of the order. So it's it's important to have workers who are trained to be flexible in this way as well. The, the people who take on these tasks will acquire new skills and new knowledge. So it's, it's in the trainees interest to try and take this on because it shows a willingness on their part to become involved, it shows a willingness on their part to learn more skills and they become more flexible as a consequence of working on special projects. They will also experience working within teams which will greatly enhance their communication skills. Uh, special projects generally speaking have teams working on them and since it's uh, perhaps a one-off project they may be in a situation where um, each member of the team has to communicate with other members and uh, come up with ideas and solve problems and discuss issues so communi communication skills is very important in this context Experience. Well, experience is a process often used by on-the-job training. Experience is very important. It's doing the task, performing the task, learning from doing it, and being aware of um, what can go wrong, and correcting situations before they arise, taking remedial measures to fix situations. And it's all done on the basis of experience. When people perform tasks over a long period 
they become experienced and hence very valuable. Learning takes place by doing. Um, it can be very effective but also time consuming. Experience takes time. It, it builds up over time. And it's very important in traditional trades. And there is a, a tension between the importance of experience within the workforce and the development of technology. It's seen by many that technology is encroaching on traditional workmanship. Um, robots can do the job to very fine tolerances, can do jobs repetitively and very efficiently. Um, it takes away from the skill that was once uh, the exclusive preserve of the the artisan of the skilled worker. So there is an issue there. Experience um, tends to start with apprenticeships and apprenticeships is training normally for people just leaving college, leaving school, perhaps around 16 years old. They enter the business, they become apprenticed, they, they work as an apprentice perhaps for four or five years. They get paid a small salary while they're training. At the same time the company invests in their learning and in their skill development and over a period of time they build up experiences and they become valuable, valuable members of the workforce. But experience is important and it's highly emphasized in the context of business and management learning. Now let's move to mentor and coaching. Trainees are assigned a supervisor to guide and instruct them during training. So a trainee, a new worker perhaps, uh, will be allocated a supervisor and the supervisor will help them during their learning. It involves constant review and critical evaluation of progress and development. Critical in a supportive manner, in a learning manner. Uh, it looks at how the employee performed a particular task and makes recommendations how it could be improved and uh, so the mentor is instructing the learner how to improve performance. It's a shortcutting experience. Presumably the person will um, learn how to do it efficiently over time through his or her own experience but the mentor is bringing his or her experience into play and suggesting ways which can can benefit the learner immediately. So it's the mentor's experience that the trainee is benefiting from. Trainees will be required to undertake tasks and activities and and also to follow instructions and they're constantly being assessed and monitored by the mentor, constantly being watched and um, suggestions being made and recommendations for improvement. So they're learning by doing, but they're doing under instruction. Now let's turn to off-the-job training methods. As I said right at the start, there were two types, on-the-job training methods, the ones we've just looked at, an off the job which could be using training centers or local colleges or using other facilities. So um, off the job training could include courses or even online courses, e-learning courses. It could be um, lectures and seminars as, uh, as you would expect at a college or a university. Uh, so it could be lectures and seminars. It could be studying case studies or, or general reading in a particular area that's been um, assigned to the trainee. 
that could be role play um, or behavior modeling um, business related games uh, people learn from simulated games and um, looking at business scenarios and trying to work out uh, what the solutions are to problems or it could be outdoor training let's look at these briefly in turn and these ones are, are somewhat more straightforward uh, courses lectures and seminars well a traditional method of learning and mostly used for auditory learners mostly used for people who listen so it's it's very traditional very almost old-fashioned it's a course it's lectures and seminars a lecture is where one person uh, talks about a subject a person with expert knowledge in an area talks about that area and uh, puts across ideas about the area that the recipients the trainees will listen to and then perhaps make notes and in this way the the knowledge is being disseminated it's been passed down or a seminar a seminar is when a group of people meet to discuss a topic they're mutually interested in the topic um, so they they talk about what they've read and talk about issues and discuss problems and answer questions and it's a discussion forum so uh, that's a seminar generally speaking individuals gain knowledge and acquire analytical abilities through formal lectures. So formal lectures are important because the, they do tend to promote analytical faculties. People are able to analyze better having attended lectures and, and having seen how the lecturer analyzes particular situations. They pick up on how to analyze situations also. Courses um, can now be offered by organizations to help their employees receive the best type of training. And it's now the case that um, agencies, training agencies, colleges, even universities offer specific courses to meet the needs of specific industries. And these can be offered as I said by the trainee attending the institution, attending the college or the training centre or the trainee might do it by distance learning, do it online. It's easier to assess individual performance and feedback through discussions. Uh, when trainees have to explain what they think or how they feel about a particular task or what issues they identify in the performance of a particular task it's easy to uh, pick up on on the issues and give answers and make recommendations and also assess the person's motivation in performing the particular task there's also role play uh, behavior modeling and business games these are very similar role play and business games tend to go together role play is an effective technique it allows individuals to experience real life situations through acting and taking on different roles doing so will promote effective decision making capabilities and the ability to act on the person's own initiative so a role play is um, when let's say employees don't understand why the manager has made certain sets of decisions and why the organization is doing certain certain things it may be within role play scenarios that the employees are asked to imagine that they are the manager what will they do under the following circumstances and they may come to the same conclusion as the manager came to. They may, they may go down the same way of thinking. 
in which case they will have a deeper understanding of why the manager made the decisions and why the organisation made the decisions it did, because they have role played it and now they understand it more effectively. So instead of being critical and perhaps uh, alienated from the decision, they would now support the decision because they can understand the logic why the, the manager undertook the, the particular course of action. There is an assumption that behaviour can be learned, imitated and modified. That individuals learn through observation and then imitate behaviour. Uh, it is an assumption, but whether that's um, central or not is debatable. One clear benefit of role play is that uh, a different perspective can be gained on a particular situation by role playing it. So that instead of the person being who they are, they adopt a different role and look at the same situation from a different angle. And that is valuable. It gives them a different perspective. Playing games is also an effective source. Games can be played with groups to promote team building or computer games and it can be games to promote decision making skills. It may sound like um, just a fun thing to do to play games but games are important in making decisions. Um, games involve decisions. Chess involves a lot of decisions. There are many factors in play in chess. It's a complicated game. But the same in football. There are decisions to be made where players are going to be played on the pitch and what skills the players have. and um, The same in business. The, um, the manager must use the workforce effectively. Decisions have to be made where to use the workers. Now the workers in turn given an opportunity to play games or simulations they can, be conf they can confront similar situations and again get different perspectives because they now see uh, the situation from a different angle and that's important. There's also outdoor training. This is widely used by recruitment agencies to try and identify leadership skills and uh, problem solving skills and so on. So typically this involves activities which individuals learn uh, and are exposed to the importance of promoting teamwork and team building. Uh, outdoor training normally involves groups of people, they have to work as a team to solve a particular problem and by observing the team and how the team worked the uh, observers are able to identify who become leaders, who have the best problem solving, who have the best analytical uh, brains to deal with the situation and so on. So it gives an insight into what the people are like. This type of training can include playing games which challenges learners mentally and physically. Um, but the games can be highly varied. It doesn't have to be football or uh, traditional games. It could be uh, a game in the sense of um, constructing a bridge over a small stream. Uh, the, the raw materials are not concealed but not in obvious places and they have to think laterally how to get the raw materials and bolt the raw materials together or tie them together to try and construct a way of getting across the stream. It could be um, a scenario. And out of that uh, the observers can identify who were the leaders, who were the problem solvers, who analysed the situation correctly, who was good at collecting the raw materials and the logistics of getting the raw materials to the stream and 
There are many aspects involved in what we've just mentioned. Um, finally, the most effective aim to work together and uh, reach goals objectively. So that's the most effective uh, outcome of working together. That's what they are attempting to do. Now in conclusion, well, there are many training and developing methods to individuals and there's many ways in which uh, training can be delivered both within the organization outside of the organization the purpose is to enhance trainee skills and capabilities within the workplace the purpose is to make the workers more efficient and to foster motivation to foster their application to achieving the tasks and their commitment to working for the organization developing their own careers and their own job security so training is important effective training takes place when the training the job training is effectively combined with off the job training to maximize training development and learning capabilities so ideally training should be from different angles it should be on the job and it should be off the job the the workers should feel valued and they should feel that the company is investing in them and they have a long-term future with the the business so training is an important topic and the different development methods that are used are important and management should select the most appropriate at least initially but ideally should look to reinforce whatever methods are selected by using different methods over a period of time but the overriding concern is that the workers have the skills and the abilities to compete effectively and to promote the business and reduce unit costs now that's all I'm going to deal with in this session so I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching <laughs>